One of the biggest storylines from FAMU spring practice is who's going to be their starting quarterback. It's a two-man race, and I have three quotes that break down the current standing and then also how that decision will be made. Oh, yeah, it's Locked On HBCU. Play my music. You are Locked On HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor and current contributing writer at USA Today's Saints Wire. Thank you for going on this journey with me. Make it locked on HBCU, your first listen of the day, every day. And remember, just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over. Just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Starts with an S and ends with an S. Today's episode, we'll wrap it up by looking at North Carolina Central and North Carolina State, both using the slogan, Why Not Us? And Coach Moten having a problem with the Wolfpack using it, what, three years later? Prior to that, we'll be looking at Quay Davis, the former Jackson State, the former Texas Southern wide receiver. He is now a Florida A&M wide receiver. He has pretty good taste, and I think this was a smart move on his part. But we kick it off with some other Rattler news, and that is what is, for me, one of, if not the biggest storyline from FAMU going into their spring practice and then also going into their fall season. So for me, FAMU in 2024 is all going to be about replacing Willie Simmons, replacing Jeremy Musa. My hand's not in the screen. Replacing Jeremy Musa, and then also repeating. And in a way, three and one are kind of tied together. So maybe it'll be two things all in all. And we'll look at that as time goes on. Sometime during the spring or early fall, we will look at what 2024 will be about for FAMU. But for right now, I want to focus specifically on number two, and that's replacing Jeremy Musa. I've said many things about Musa and the superlatives that he's received, and I always wanted to make sure it was known. I think that Jeremy Musa is a really good quarterback. I genuinely do. And replacing him is not going to be easy. It probably won't happen immediately at a high level. It's it, A lot of times when you get a player who's really good, the person who follows is not <laughs> That's just how it happens a lot of times, I notice, right? Or it takes them a second to get there. It's not often that you go from a swipe player of the year to another swipe player of the year. Yes, Alcorn State did it, but it's it's not that way all the time. And if you do, sometimes that second player needs time to develop. It's a two-man race to replace them right now. You have Junior Meritovic, and then you have Daniel Richardson, who is a transfer. Richardson is a transfer, but then Meritovic is a guy who he's coming in and he's a junior, ironically, but he's been with the team for the entirety of his collegiate career. So you have those two players. I have quotes from head coach James Cozy, and I have quotes from a quote from offensive coordinator Joseph Henry. So let's start off with Cozy, because I think that this is going to be something that determines who's going to be the starting quarterback. He said, and I quote, they're commanding the offense and we're evaluating them daily. The biggest thing for me is making sure we take care of the football. I'd rather have the quarterback who threw one touchdown pass and no interceptions than the guy who threw two touchdown passes and two interceptions. Now, while that may seem normal, I also think that's a lot of coach speak for most people. And I think specifically when you're looking at offensive minded head coaches, but a defensive minded head coach, he means that. Because he trusts in his defense. When you trust in your defense, you say, just don't give the ball up. If you just don't give the ball up, I trust my side to do everything I need to to take us to a victory. So as long as you're safe with the ball, you, maybe you're not taking as many chances and maybe that doesn't lead to more splash plays, but if you're safe with the ball, I'll take that because I know what I will do. So this feels like a very defensive answer. Depending on how you look at it, it's either a defensive-minded answer or it's a coach-speak answer. And for me, 
defensive minded coaches typically want safe quarterbacks. So I'll chalk this up to Cozy having a defensive background. I, I don't write this off as coach speak in the in the slightest. I'm be honest with you. Right. And then the other one is. But also, let me say this. That to me, this means the guy with the higher floor has the advantage. That's what it tells me. So when I hear him talk about touchdown passes versus interceptions, no dud. Nobody wants to have volatile. Um, how do I want to say it? No one, no one wants to have volatility as far as greatness versus failure. Like nobody wants to sit here and see a bunch of touchdowns. You don't want Brett Favre, right? Like they don't want Brett Favre. That's what I'm saying. Some people will be able to take that. Some won't. He's not as a defensive minded head coach. He's going to take the higher floor, even if that comes with a lower ceiling. That's the best way to put it. The next quote is, I know people also from Cozy. I know people want me to make a decision, but we'll let it play out and make sure we take our time. This is not going to be made by the spring game. This probably won't be made until fall camp. And I feel like that's how every single quarterback battle these days happens. They all go down to the wire. I, I don't know what it is. But that's what it feels like, especially in my time doing Locked on HBCU. I feel like I used to remember quarterback battles not being decided a week, two weeks before the season started. But that's what it seems like it's been not only in HBCU football, but then also just in football in general. I'm seeing more of that. I think Ole Miss had a two quarterback system in week one or week zero maybe a year, two years ago. I'm just seeing this more often. So I'm not going to be shocked. Matter of fact, I will be shocked if they decide in the spring. I won't be shocked. I expect them to decide in the fall. So if this decision comes in the next three weeks, nah, I'll be stunned. Um, but then also, Coach Henry, he had this to say, the offensive coordinator. Junior's been here for a while, really setting, settling into the offense and does a good job taking charge. He's starting to take the next step to be able to lead our football team. D. Rich has done a really good job learning quickly and has gotten a ton of snaps as an FBS starting quarterback. So maybe the experience versus the inexperience, that's one thing that's going to lean the war of Richardson. Don't lean the way of Richardson, excuse me, because you have Richardson who's coming in from a central Michigan, from a Florida Atlantic. He's been around. But then you have Junior, who he's coming in and he's been around fam you, but he doesn't have much time. I think he has a couple of starts, two maybe. Right. He shot, he sat behind McKay. He sat behind Musa. So he's he's very familiar with what they're going to do and what fam you is about but he might not have that real game action. So it's just depending on which way you're looking. Overall, it's going to come down to who is more risk averse. That's the word I was looking for earlier. The more risk averse quarterback is going to be the guy who gets this job. And I think that has to do with Cozy being a defensive minded head coach. You see that in various levels of football. Defensive minded head coaches believe that if you just don't screw up, you don't have to make plays. If you just don't screw up, my defense is going to take care of it. So we'll see who that's going to be. I'm very interested. It's a two-man race, and replacing Jeremy Musa is not going to be easy. This is a 1,000% going to be a tall task, but it's between Daniel Richardson and then Junior Muratovic, right? Because that's what's been highlighted. Shout out to our guy, Gerald Thomas, friend of the show. He wrote that in the Tallahassee Democrat. Great article, breaking down everything. And I, I this is when I wish we had preseason. Quarterback battles is when I wish that the collegiate football game had preseason, but they don't. So as this goes on, specifically in the spring game, we'll see. It sounds like both are looking really good. Both are taking care of the ball. And until that changes, this will continue to be a difficult decision for James Cozy. And it will continue to be something, if not two, one of the three things that we'll be watching for FAMU in 2024. Now, as we push forward, let's keep it in the Rattlers, right? Let's keep it with the Rattlers and let's look at Quay Davis. Because whether that's Richardson or if it's Junior, they're going to have to throw to somebody. They have a new target in Quay Davis who will be transferring to FAMU from Texas Southern. So let's break down his good taste and then why this was a very smart decision for Davis specifically. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. And if you're a small business owner who isn't using LinkedIn, I have to question what we're doing. I have to question your priorities. I have to question how important is growing your business to you. Because for me, LinkedIn is the number one spot. And it's something that is a requirement if you're a small business owner. So let's take this. 
Let's say you need somebody in the HR department. Let's say you need any any role filled to elevate your program, elevate your office, elevate your, your business, elevate any department within that business. LinkedIn is the place to go. And you may think I'm just talking. First off, the options are there. Eight billion people on LinkedIn on a weekly basis. So everybody's coming here to look for a job. You have a bunch of people who are qualified and, and hungry for a job as well. So you go to LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. It's going to be hard to not find somebody with eight billion options, right? Like if you can't find that, what are we doing? But if you really want to question and get some more of the numbers, 86, 86, that's 86 percent of small businesses find a qualified candidate in the first 24 hours. Within an hour of posting your job, LinkedIn will help you find the right person for it. So go to LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions do apply. As we continue rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day. For your second listen, make sure you're checking out Locked on Sports today. It's the first of its kind, 24-7 live sports network on YouTube. So go to Locked on Sports today and subscribe. Quay Davis will be joining, whether it's Daniel Richardson or Junior Meritovic, and he will be one of, and in his hopes, the number one receiver for the Rattlers next year. The Texas former, the former Texas Southern wide receiver is now a fam you rattler. And if this was a year ago, everybody would be going crazy right now. If this was a year ago, people would be going crazy about Quay Davis to fam you. But in the last 365 days, a lot has changed for both Quay Davis and his status in the, the public eye. And then also fam you for their status in the public eye, but then more importantly, the personnel that's there. I'll start off with Quay Davis, and I just think that these are both bigger question marks than they were a year ago. I don't mean that to be disrespectful. It's not a it's not a cap being placed on them, but there are some questions, and I think that's why people aren't jumping up and down. The question marks are bigger for Quay Davis, though, because he's the player, right? And, and when we're looking at the player going to a school, we're not usually like, oh, yeah, great so-and-so state university right like we're not really doing that what we're really doing is saying oh this player is the focal point and this player will be great for this school because of this i do still think that if quay davis can reach his talent if he can reach close to his ceiling that he will be a good addition for famu the thing about quay davis is that for some they may question whether or not he can reach his ceiling i don't have that question yet He's been a he's now a three time SWAT player for three different schools. Right. So his freshman year, he went to Jackson State. His second year, he went to Texas Southern. And now for his third year, he's going to FAMU. And I think that he has really good taste. These are three really good options that he picked. And I understand one does not look like the other. Texas Southern is not FAMU. It's not Jackson State because you're looking at two powerhouses in the SWAC over the last half decade. What, three, four years now at this point? I get it. 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 But for Quay Davis specifically and for wide receivers, I actually think that Texas Southern was a really good option for him. And I don't say that with being biased. Andrew Body was a good or a good quarterback. He was a good option to throw to your receiver. But unfortunately, he got hurt in the first game. In that first game, I seen Quay Davis go for seven catches, 120 yards, and a touchdown. And I saw the chemistry building. This was the first time that they played together. I saw the chemistry building, and I saw what I thought could have been a special connection between one and five. But unfortunately, one was injured in the first game, and he didn't play again for the rest of the year. Then five, who is Quay Davis, he was then, had played five more games. And it wasn't great. Like, the numbers weren't great. And I understand, he played enough games to where you could question him. And that's the thing about Quay Davis is that off of his time of picking Texas Southern and all of that, right? Because I understand what people are coming from with that. At Jackson State, he was buried underneath a lot of talent, but he was a freshman. And it looked like the future was bright because people were excited about him coming to Jackson State. But then Shador Sanders and Deion Sanders leave. And then Quay Davis leaves too. Because one thing you wanted is you wanted to see Shador Sanders throw to Quay Davis. And Quay Davis wanted Shador Sanders to throw to him. So once Shador left, now Quay Davis said, all right, I'm going to go find somewhere else. And he finds Texas Southern. And he finds arguably, in my opinion, going in, that was the best quarterback in the SWAC. At, at worst, second best quarterback in the SWAC. That's how I felt. Going into 2023, I thought the Andrew body was for sure going to be an all-SWAC quarterback. And who knows what would have happened. We never will. 
We never will. Maybe he'll do it at Alabama State, and that'll be what that'll be. But for for Davis, he went there, had a good first game, and then he ended up changing quarterbacks. Things never worked out. Is that a an, an indictment on his talent? Maybe. Maybe that's an indictment on his talent. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's a another pass. Maybe it's a reasonable factor on why his numbers didn't stack up. So I'm not sure he can't reach his ceiling. I'm not as pessimistic about him not reaching his ceiling. But he'll need to do it at FAMU. And essentially, he'll be walking into the same situation that he left at Jackson State. Coach left, quarterback left, not for the same reason that the quarterback left, but coach left, quarterback left. Now he's stepping into FAMU. I'll be very interested. Now for Florida A&M, what's the question mark? Your coach left, your quarterback left. I don't know what you'll be. Nobody does. For FAMU, they have a void at wide receiver. Quay Davis has a high ceiling, and if they can match, right, if that void, which we know is there, but they brought in some more talent, and then that ceiling, which we know he has, if he can reach it, those things come together and they see eye to eye, now it's a completely different conversation. Like, like now we're sitting here thinking, is Quay Davis going to be the number one receiver? Because they don't have much return. They have Jamari Gassett. They have Jamari Gassett. So whether he's going to be one, two, three, you can see him being an integral part of the passing game. Because, yes, you brought in a guy like Ace Cobb, who already has a, uh, a, a relationship with Daniel Richardson, who we spoke about earlier. Richardson, or excuse me, Cobb, Davis, Gassett. Like, those could be your top three receivers. And at that, three top receivers, that gives you room if you're Quay Davis. So I think that this was very good for him. This is a very smart decision. He goes somewhere that the majority of their receiving production is gone from the previous season. So you know the opportunity will be there. And anybody that's transferring in, I'm looking at y'all like I'm looking at me. We both knew. At the end of the day, we're both new. So what gives you the leg up? Even if you're an early enrollee, that's not enough for me. If you're an early enrollee, yeah, you might have a slight leg or you might have took the first step, but you ain't got no no real lead on me. That's how I'm thinking. That's how he should be thinking. That's probably how he is thinking. So I think that this is a good decision by Quay Davis. I think this is a good decision by FAMU. Quay Davis went somewhere that has a complete void. They lost the majority of their receiving production. Even Kareem Burke entered the transfer portal not that long ago. So FAMU isn't returning a lot of receiving production. While you look at FAMU, they get a player who had a high ceiling, and they're saying, you know what, there's been some reasons you haven't been able to hit at your previous locations, but you will here. So I, I think that this is a good decision by both, and I'll see how it turns out in 2024. But as we keep pushing, let's kind of wind the clock back. We'll look at the present, which is North Carolina State. Yes, I know, not an HBCU, but head coach North Car head coach of North Carolina Central men's basketball, Lavelle Moten, has a problem with the Wolfpack using the phrase, why not us? Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors, and eBay Motors is what you, is where you need to go if you're looking to fix up your car. I just called my friend. I said, hey, man, you good? You in the car, you riding? He was like, yeah, man, I, I, uh, my AC is X, Y, and Z, though, right? Because he was talking to me about how my AC was good, right? He said, man, you got good AC in here. All he needs to do is go to eBay Motors, get some of that, fix that up, man. Right. That, that's all you need to do. Maybe you need to replace some air filters. You know, I'm not I'm not the biggest mechanic in the world. I don't know what he can do by himself to be able to do that. Or maybe he needs to go somewhere that's just going to charge him labor and he needs to get parts. You could do that, too, because that's the beautiful thing. We want quality at a good price. eBay Bonus provides that it's not cheap. I don't like saying cheap because cheap sounds like quality and price. No, we want quality equipment at a good price. That's what eBay Motors provides for us. So whether you want to fix up your car or maybe you just want to add something to make it look a little bit nicer, go put your car into the My Garage section on ebaymotors.com and one of the 120 million parts on the website will 100% fit you. eBay Motors Guarantee Fit is available to U.S. customers only. ebaymotors.com, let's ride. As we're wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day, every day, making it all the way to segment three. And I thank you two times for that. Thank you. Thank you. North Carolina Central head coach Lavelle Moten is upset 
at North Carolina State for using the phrase, why not us? He says, that's our phrase. And I'm genuinely up in the air on how much this matters. On if he's, they be saying everybody's feelings are justified. I don't necessarily believe that. I'll be honest with you. And I, I know that's cool to say, and, and it's and maybe it's disrespectful to tell somebody they, they feelings ain't valid or ain't justified, but sometimes folks be wrong. And I'm on the fence on whether or not Lavelle Moton is one of those guys who was wrong because I see where he's coming from. And if I view it from a particular angle and I look this way, I see it. If I look this way, this isn't really a big deal. So it's really just based on my perspective and based on the point of view. Let's get into what he said. So he said, dear North Carolina State, congratulations to you. I love the run that y'all are on, but this quote, why not us is copyright infringement to North Carolina Central basketball, university basketball. We hereby grant you permission to use it, but please make checks payable to North Carolina Central Men's Basketball Foundation. Three laughing emojis. No, the laughing emojis were not meant to say I'm joking with you. He told somebody else who said, hey, man, it's, it's love in the area. Yeah, it is all love, but cut the check. That's what he said. So I'm going to take this as he's being for real. And this didn't come out on April Fool's Day. I was so happy to have a bunch of news that I didn't have to cover that came out on Monday. Because, boy, there's a uh, there's a particular story that I'm going to check back up on tomorrow morning to see if it's real. And if it is real, then we'll probably talk about it on tomorrow's episode. But if it's not, if it's not real, then I, I didn't want to come on and talk about it and be, and, you know, be wrong about it. Just to be clear, he's not angry. Moten. Moten is not angry and he, he doesn't have a problem. He doesn't have a, a an issue with North Carolina Central or North Carolina State. He said, and I quote, I need all of you Twitter slash ex basketball experts to issue an apology to the head coach of North Carolina State. Right. He didn't call him by name. He wasn't passive aggressive, but like that. OK, so there's no problem here. It's just the term. He doesn't like why not us. In the term does fit North Carolina State, just to be clear, they're the only double-digit team, double-digit seed team, still in the NCAA tournament. They're the only team with a double-digit seeding to make it beyond the, the second round, right? Any other team that won in the first round, they lost in the second. And here, here they are still standing in the Final Four. So I, I get it. The why not us makes sense. But if you ask Moten, that's his thing. That's their thing. And geography is the reason that this is a big deal. If North Carolina State was Texas State, I don't even think this is a conversation because I don't necessarily think that North Carolina Central came up with why not us. But he says copyright infringement, so that must mean they trademarked it. You ain't got to come up with something to trademark it. You don't have to do that. But because these two schools are 30 minutes apart, then it brings up an interesting dynamic because one thing I will not take from Moten is because I'm not on the inside, so I don't know. One thing I won't take from Moten is bigger entities steal from smaller entities all the time because people aren't going to know or care. Like, that's real. And if we're talking about the bigger school in North Carolina State versus the smaller school in North Carolina Central, I don't need to get to the PWI versus HBCU. There's no need to even play that card today. When you're just looking at bigger school versus smaller school, they could have easily saw North Carolina Central down the road say, why not us? And now they're jacking it a couple of years later. It's just difficult because I always thought that why not us was just an ESPN and skate creation because I've seen fam. You have it. I've seen Southern. I've seen Grambling. I've seen Howard, right? Like I've seen all of these things, Howard golf, uh, Grambling dance, Southern uh, dance. I think it was actually Grambling cheerleaders, but um, fam, you football. Like I've seen this. All, I've seen it so many times. I didn't think it was specific to North Carolina central. But when he throws words like copyright infringement out there, to me, that means it must be something that is specific. That's just, that's a very specific lingo to say. It's very specific lingo to say. It's not just, oh, we came up with it. The only problem is I don't think North Carolina State is making any money off of it. I think they're just saying it. And all of the other apparel that I've seen, it's not North Carolina State licensed. Like, it, it, they didn't license that information or that, that apparel, so they're not making money off it. It's just a bunch of people taking the logo or the, the lingo and using it. So I don't know if you can really, I don't think it would get to the point of suing, but it's just a catchphrase. It, 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 this is interesting, right? Like this is just a conundrum for me because I don't want to write it off because big schools are big entities, period. 
they steal from small entities, whether that's company, whether that's people, whether that's schools, right? Like I can steal a bar, right? Or I can say a bar and a bigger rapper can say that bar, but nobody knows me in the music landscape. So no one's going to care. And if I speak on it, man, he ain't, he ain't checking for you. Can you notice what folks saying? North Carolina State ain't checking for Central. They, yes, they are. They very well could be. They're 30 minutes apart. The idea that they don't give a crap about what North Carolina Central does, I think is a wrong assumption. So this is just a conundrum. I wanted to bring this to you, allow you to make your own take. I don't have an, a, a strong opinion on it. Like I said, if I look from this way, I see what Moten's saying. If I look from this way, I'm like, not quite. It just depends on which way that I'm looking. And as I'm sitting here in the chair that moves, my perspective changed on a consistent basis. One thing that shouldn't change is you continue to make this your first listen of the day every day. I got some news that apparently both the SWAC and MIAC player of the year have entered the transfer portal. Once again, I'm just hoping this news, along with some of the other stuff, is not an April Fool's. What a stupid day. I hate that day. I'm glad that by the time you hear my voice, it'll be over. No April Fool's from me, and I ain't trying to hear no April Fool's from you. So I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day. For your second listen, make sure you're checking out Locked On Sports today. In the meantime, in between time, if you're looking for me, you can find me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Until the next time that we hear each other, family, take care, stay blessed. Peace.